Blog Talk Radio. This is In the Dark, and I am David Kirk. Welcome to the show. Uh, this is going to be a very exciting show for uh, for you guys tonight. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and if you've just stumbled across our little show here, I encourage you to take a journey with us into the strange, the weird, and the unexplained. In the second hour of the show, we're going to have activist... Uh, and documentary filmmaker Mark Howitt, who uh, Mark is also the founder of the uh, activist website World Public Union, uh, which uh, his main goal is to get transparency uh, with government and industry. And he also created two films recently about uh, the Aurora shooting and the Sandy Hook shooting. And coming up in just 20 minutes, we're going to have on Darren Crapo, who is a UFO researcher and host of the YouTube show uh, UFO Planet. And I'm looking forward to that interview very much. Uh, But right now, uh, let's talk about some of the things that have been in the news this week. Uh... If anybody studies the sun or is just concerned about their own safety, uh, this might be a little shocking news to you. A huge sunspot has formed on the surface of the sun, um, and scientists are saying that it is not anything to worry about just yet, um, but it does have the potential to form a uh, solar flare, which... Uh, you may know could signal the end of life uh, on planet Earth as we know it. Uh, People call it the uh, solar kill shot uh, because uh, a solar flare uh, has the potential, if powerful enough, to completely wipe out our electrical grid. And uh, as scientists are saying that this uh, solar... Um, sunspot on the sun does have the potential to create a solar flare. They're saying it probably won't be damaging to us, but even not, uh, just like that meteor that barely missed us by 17,000 miles last week, um, how long are we going to be able to dodge a bullet? Um, When is the next solar flare going to be? When is the next meteorite going to be that will signal uh, end times, so to speak. And I'm not talking biblical, I'm just talking uh, back to the Stone Age type stuff. Um, and you can file this next article under uh, government turning against us. Um, a little five, three-year-old girl who was on her way to a Disney World um, was groped by the TSA. Uh, now, this girl is confined to a wheelchair. Uh, the story didn't say, uh, you know, if it was uh, a, a birth defect or if, you know, she broke her legs or something, but she was confined to a wheelchair. She was three years old on her way to Disney World. And this TSA uh, woman groped her, took away her. You should look, look up the video. Um, just look up toddler in wheelchair, grow by TSA, 
and uh, this girl was crying. She didn't want to go to Disney World anymore because of what the TSA was doing to her. And uh, I just, whenever I see stories like that, it really ticks me off. Um, and I'm like, we'll probably talk to Mark Howitt, who's coming up in the next hour, about that and get his opinion on that. Um, and while I was perusing the internet today during my 24 straight hour of 24 straight hours of show prep, <laughs> I came across this really weird video, uh, and I linked it, linked up to it on our Twitter page, which I should mention we do have a Twitter page now. It is at in the dark. Two one two six. That's at in the dark two one two six. So I encourage you to follow us on Twitter. Uh, I linked this video. This is a really weird video. Um, supposedly, it actually gets you like uh, at, like an out of a body experience. Um, and it was so weird. That it's like this: these flashing lines and these uh, numbers. These letters keep coming at you. And you're supposed to read each num uh, number, or I'm sorry, letter as it, as it flashes. And it keeps getting faster and faster. And I was like watching uh, like half of it. And um, I just had to stop. I, I was worried it was like some sort of Manchurian candidate type thing where, you know, it, it, it somehow got into your mind and like... Uh, made you like a kind of like a Manchurian candidate, so to speak. So I just stopped watching it, but there is a link to it on Twitter, on the Twitter page if you want to see it. Um, really weird video, to say the least. Um, and there's a lot of weird videos out, out there, like on YouTube, that uh, supposedly like mess with your mind. I, I never knew that videos could do uh, things like that. I mean, they're, they're, it's supposedly like uh, like taking drugs or something, that these some of these videos actually have that effect. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, but definitely check out that one video if you're up to it. And there's been a lot of changes to the end of the dark show, a lot of big news for our show. We actually have a website now, and I encourage all of you to go over and check it out. It's really simple. It's just in the dark Friday night dot com. That's in the dark Friday night dot com. Um, and it has all of our information up there. All of our guests, our recent guests, they all have bios up there and uh, a lot of different news that interested me that you can check out. Um, for, for one example, uh, one of the stories up there was a weird story about Winston Churchill's plan to fight the Nazis with icebergs. You heard me right, icebergs. He... Um, this was like during when before the United States joined the war, the, not, um, the English were really dire for like any crazy thing they'd go for. And this one scientist came to Winston Churchill about a plan to make giant aircraft carriers out of icebergs. And um, he found this way that you could put um, wood. Uh, and ice together, and it makes the ice stronger, so it would actually be able to support aircraft and an aircraft carrier top on top of it. Because usually ice, uh, you know, is very brittle, and the the reason why it's so brittle is because there's little air pockets in it. But this scientist found a way to make it incredibly strong, and uh, it, it was a really interesting story. Also up on the site, which again is in the dark, FridayNight.com. Um, is uh, a story about can the UFO culture survive um, video cameras or cell phone cameras? And they're bringing up the point about how everybody in Russia has those um, dash cam cameras on their, their, their dash of their car. Um, and they're saying that because everybody, you know, has a phone, a cell phone with them at all times, uh, they're saying that UFOs uh, really don't exist because you, you think you would see more of them because so many people have cell phones. Uh, kind of a weird story. I'm not sure if I agree with that. We're probably going to ask Darren what his uh, take on the story is later on in the show. Um, if I can remember to do that, but you can read that story at our website. Um, and... 
that website link again is in the dark Friday night dot com. Uh, let me uh, bring uh, show you uh, bring up the number here. It's six four six nine two nine zero four three eight. That again is six four six nine two nine zero four three eight. And we're going to take your calls when Darren comes on in just the next couple of minutes. Um, and I encourage you if you have any weird UFO. Uh, related stories or sightings that you want to tell us, uh, call in and we'll get you on the air to talk with uh, me and Darren uh, in just a couple of minutes here. We're actually going to take our first break of the day uh, and we'll be back with our first guest, Darren Crapo, UFO researcher and host of... uh, UFO Planet on YouTube. We'll be right back after this break. Back to the show. I'm David Kirk, and this is In the Dark Friday Night. Uh, we're going to be joined by Darren Crapo in just a couple minutes uh, to talk about UFOs uh, and that kind of stuff, uh, UFO phenomenon. Um, so let's go to Darren right now. Hello, is this uh, Darren Crapo? This is it. Yes, it is. How are you? Hi, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Yeah, no problem. Had a little bit of an issue there calling in initially on my uh, Magic Jack. Uh, didn't like the conference call, but my cell phone works good. All right, so you're having a good connection and everything? You betcha. All right. Uh, now, Darren is the host of the YouTube show uh, UFO Planet. Um, Darren, what really got you started in the whole UFO uh, phenomenon? What what got you interested in it? Well, I've always been interested in it. Uh, I I would go back to uh, even as far as when I was a child. uh, There's a very popular lake in the area here, and on the way to that lake, there is a, uh, I guess you would call it a, a sky monitoring station and, and I always wondered what it was and asked a lot of questions when I was small and it, it takes pictures of the sky all night long and uh, my father explained it to me and that it was looking for UFOs and, and anomalies in the sky and ever since that I've always been very very interested um, my career took me into technology and uh, I spent a lot of years doing that and uh, all the while, I would gobble up any UFO information that I could come across and uh, uh, also listen to a lot of talk radio. And uh, in, about uh, six months ago, I got very serious about it and started producing UFO Planet to give myself an opportunity to delve right into it and, and start doing some research into UFOs. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Darren actually made us, was kind enough to uh, make a special show for us tonight. The link is up on our website at inthedarkfridaynight.com, and it's going to have some of the different UFO sightings and videos that we're going to go over on tonight's program. Uh, But, Darren, what was, uh, you you were talking about that installation. Was it some sort of, like, military uh, installation, or what was that? Well, 
it it uh, that I was never ever clear who ran it. It it currently is still sitting there, and I would assume it must have been military. After the end of the Cold War, uh, they removed the cameras from it, so now just the shell, and it looks a lot like a rocket. I'm actually going to videotape it and put it on one of my episodes here coming up. And uh, I live, uh, well, I'm located about four hours north of the uh, ICM base in Great Falls, Montana, and I'm about uh, one hour west of a very large British military base that's based here in Canada. And so it potentially was operated by one of those organizations. Yeah. Um, well, you know, that, that kind of brings up the question, uh, you know, if, if a lot of these UFOs are, you know, uh, I'd say a lot of them, the majority of them are, fakes or tricks of the camera uh, and then there's maybe like 5% that are experimental military aircraft but then there's maybe just like 1% that is actually the real you know alien ET uh, and even if it's just 1% I mean that still means they're visiting us and you have to wonder with just like you were talking about this installation that was you said was looking for UFOs you have to wonder if the government knows they are visiting us and why they'd be hiding it from the general population. Well, I I have some friends in high government places and and I've posed that question to them upon occasion and the the same response every time and that's a, a flat denial that they know anything more than the average person. I I've pondered that thought in my mind a lot of whether the government is doing a cover-up to uh, prevent us from possible panic and my own personal feeling is that there is potentially that they're doing some covering up but I, I find it difficult to believe that the average everyday politician is involved in any of that they have a difficult enough time running the countries that they run I don't see it possible for them to keep something like that secret for very long. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So but I, I think it goes a little bit further towards the military side, and I think there's a lot of information that's not only not being shared with the public, it's perhaps not even being shared with the leaders of the countries there where the incidents occur. There's that potential. We've, we've all read stories about presidents of the United States who once they took office started asking questions and, and ran into walls when when it came to getting answers at least that's what we have been told yeah um, I was actually listening to an old uh, episode of Art Bell I think back in the 19 it was like 1997 and he had a guest on who said supposedly that the reason why uh, John F. Kennedy was killed is because uh, he knew they were aliens, uh, and he didn't like uh, that the population, the general population, didn't know, and he thought that they should have the right to know that we were being visited, and that's why he was assassinated, because, you know, these people that actually really control what's going on didn't want that to happen, and since, like, after that happened, no real president has really known the truth uh, it's just been kept by like uh, like you said the military who are really running the things you know what i mean right i i, I think that there's uh, when it comes to visits by extraterrestrials or or if there are crafts that have been recovered with beings inside them i think that uh, there's a very small circle of people who ever know about that um i too am, am a huge Art Bell fan, and uh, I actually still listen to his programs every night, his recordings as I as I retire to my bed, and uh, I, I believe that there are a lot of instances that are potentially being covered up by multiple levels of, of uh, governments, military, and that that information is being withheld from from many people, including 
the leaders of the country, as you say, as you shared the example of President Kennedy. And I know there are other presidents who have asked. And we've all heard the explanation that, well, they would never tell us because of the panic that it would cause. And I addressed that on one of my episodes of UFO Planet, and, and I mentioned in there that I think maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that perhaps may have been the case. But I think people now are more accustomed to uh, talk about it. If, if anyone believes that with all the billions of planets and stars and galaxies that they're discovering with Hubble, if they believe that we're the only ones that have intelligence and the ability to create and to reason in this entire universe, I think they're being very naive and, and very arrogant. And uh, But whether or not they are actually coming to visit us, that is still a debatable point. Now, I, I in the uh, episode that you can refer to for this program. I have a, a clip in there of a, a nature clip where a person was outside filming some bald eagles in a tree and they happened to capture some unidentifiable objects in the sky right behind it. Now they only flash through the sky. To me it looks like there's about four objects that come into view just for a short period of time and to me it that that might be one of those interdimensional travel things now that that's also potentially where ufos come from there's that potential where people subscribe to the belief that there's more than one dimension here right on the planet and that perhaps they're somehow have figured out a way to travel between the dimensions which would mean that they don't have to travel for a thousand or twenty thousand light years to to get to visit with us here on Earth. They're right here with us. So there are a lot of different uh, opinions on what UFOs are, where they come from. But I am a firm believer that they exist, and that one day we will know everything. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh... Yeah, I know some people speculate that maybe they're demons, uh, even some people I've heard say angels, but no matter what they are, uh, it's just it's a very interesting topic to say the least, and I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about, I know this was in your video, I, th I think it was a couple weeks ago you put it up, uh, it was about the, uh, the, the Dmitry Medvedev uh, kind of coming out and, and saying that each uh, president of Russia has this the nuclear codes to the country and then has the file on alien visitations in Russia and he was kind of stepping down so he was giving a nod to uh, all these UFO conspiracists I, I guess you could call them saying uh, as much as he could pretty much telling them that yeah we're being visited but a, cu a couple people have put down that video saying he was just joking around. Um, what's your opinion on, on that? Well, my opinion on that, and I watched that video several times. Now, you look at the the look on the r Russian reporter's face when, when uh, he is telling her about it, and she looks like she's really trying hard not to laugh. And when he mentions that you can refer to a uh, documentary called The Men in Black. There's even laughter in the studio that you can hear in the background when he mentions that. Yet, there is a document in Russia, a documentary called The Men in Black. He's not referring to the movie starring Will Smith. He is referring to an actual documentary over there. My personal feeling is, is that... Uh, he was trying to say that they are there. And he had a serious look on his face all through it and uh, tried really hard to be serious. Now, you know, it could be a setup. And I went to use the clip for my program. And I was, when I discussed it with YouTube, I found out that there was a copyright on that clip. 
and it was held by a very a company with a very strange name. And I thought, well, that's not even the name of the agency that produced the clip. But uh, so I was only able to show it. And if you actually watch it in full screen, you you can see the translations on the screen. But it's it's an interesting video. My take is that they do have uh, the Men in Black documentary and that they do have the documentation of visits to extraterrestrial. I think we'd be, all be naive to think that they only visit the government of one country or, or that one government has that information. But there certainly seems to be a worldwide conspiracy to demean people who believe. It's uh, probably similar to what people of various religions over the course of time have gone through when they were persecuted for believing in something that they felt very strongly about. Yet religion itself requires you to have faith, whereas you don't shoot angels in the sky with your video camera every day. Yet there are hundreds of videos captured worldwide every day of your polls. Whether they are all extraterrestrials, that's debatable. I think you're right when you say they're about 1% are, are actual extraterrestrials. Yeah. Um, now, let's uh, go to some of the clips in your video. Uh, and you can, everybody who's listening to this can go to our website, in the dark, com and follow along with me and Darren. Uh, kind of go over uh, the first clip in your video and, and explain it a little bit for us. Well, the first clip in the video is uh, entitled Encounter with UFO, and that clip appeared all over the Internet just a couple of days ago. And I posted it in my show or included it in my program this week so that I could demonstrate to you how difficult it is when you go online and you find a UFO clip to prove that that clip is recent, that there is a that's a unique clip, because once something gets loaded up, just like this this new awesome looking app that makes a nice UFO video, got uploaded to multiple locations, and I think I found ten different cities where it was claimed to have originated. So it makes UFO research online difficult. Yet. This was obviously a fake. It was creative. It was fun to watch. And uh, it's nice to see people get involved that way. Although, at the same time, it uh, makes it more difficult to distinguish the real videos. Yeah, it was it was clearly a fake. But you're right, it was an interesting video to see nonetheless. Um, and that that kind of... The, the reason why I brought that first video up is... Uh, that that kind of looked like a mothership, and to bring up motherships uh, here in the United States, the uh, Air Force is uh, bringing out this drone um, that that they describe as a mothership, and it's going to have hundreds of little drones uh, come out from the bottom and uh, can kill hundreds of people within like a, a, a certain range. And it, it looked like very strange, um, to say the least. And you, you kind of wonder. I, I read about that and and uh, watched a video about that. And and sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and you kind of, well, I was just gonna say you kind of have to wonder where they get you know the ideas for this. If if you know they uh, have kind of got the technology from aliens, you know what I mean. Well, I, you know, you take a look at the history of the earth that we know it in a traditional Christian sense. Okay, the, the Christian world thinks that the earth is only a few thousand years old and that man has been around for, what, 3,000 years. And you take a look at uh, what has happened in the course of history in the last 50 years alone, where, you know, 75 years ago, let's go back, you know, what our grandparents, the life they lived and the life that our grandchildren or our children or, or even ourselves are living today, completely different worlds in a matter of just a few years when, we've, when man's been around for centuries. Why would there be that massive transformation of technology, of knowledge, of, 
of everything like that. Where does it all of a sudden come from? Why the monumental leap? Yeah. Um, so it, that that lends to that argument. Did they get that from somewhere else? Yeah. Uh, well, if you just look at the technology, uh, GPS. Who who was the originator? Who was the inventor of that? It was the military. Same thing with the internet. Um, rockets. Well, rockets. Uh, the original was uh, von Braun from Germany, and some people, you know, I know you. There was a video you were kind of joking around saying that. Uh, is it a possibility that aliens visited the Nazis? But Nazis did have a lot of uh, technology that was really years ahead of anything else that the Allies oh, had. They were they were light years ahead of us, and it's a good thing that the Allies had sheer numbers of people because had they had more time to develop the technologies that they already had on the go, we all might be speaking German today. Mm, and, yeah. and, or, or we'd be wearing swastikas, not that Germans are, you know, anything bad. Yeah, but... but uh, uh, that there kind is of, that possibility. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, let's go talk about the uh, next video. The next video goes down to Santiago, Chile, and uh, this is a, a typical UFO video that shows multiple lights up in the sky. I really like the video because it's just self-described by the person who, who shot it, and also uh, you see the skyline, the city line, and so you can you know, compare the lights on the ground to the lights in the sky. And it's definitely not something that uh, you see every day. So to me, that falls in my personal feeling after doing research on, vi on uh, UFO videos is that there's three types of UFO videos that you're going to find online. And that's the obvious fakes. You're going to find the ones that are explainable. And then you're going to find the ones that are unexplainable. And, and to me, the one from, from Chile falls into the unexplainable category. It's a good example of a UFO, and it also gives a good example of how to shoot a UFO video so that you're not just looking at a dot floating in the sky. You can have some reference points. Exactly. Uh, and again, you can uh, follow along with us. Uh, there's a video to all of the different uh, UFOs, uh, the sightings that Darren is talking about tonight on our website, in the dark Uh Let's. Uh, I, I want to talk about. Uh, you were talking before that you'd have to be stupid to uh, not think that there um, are aliens just because out of the sheer number of planets uh, that they're finding every day. They're finding. It seems like they're finding another one. Um, but we don't even know if there is uh, life on Mars or moons of Saturn and stuff. We don't even know if, if there's not life there. So, and I know you did a, a, a couple of different uh, videos about some different structures on Mars. What is your take on uh, Mars? I mean, was there life? Is there life? Was it intelligent? What, what do you think is going on on Mars? Well, I think that uh, in, my, in my own personal feeling, uh, and I do a lot of, I, I'm a NASA fan, and I, I follow them with their apps and on their television channel. I think from the discoveries that they've made that there used to be water flowing on, on Mars, and I think Mars is a lot different today, obviously, than it used to be at one time. And I'm just going to throw a theory out there, not that I subscribe to it, but I, I just want to throw a, a theory out there. What's to say that we're not Martians? That uh, uh, many millennia ago, they, they people were living on Mars as, like they are on Earth, and and uh, their planet was dying, and so they found a way to send a landing party to Earth. You know, turn the, let's turn the tables backwards because there's some who think that we may need to have to inhabit Mars, but Maybe we are the people that came from Mars. Now, that may be way out there in the way of thinking, but I think we have come to learn. I, You know, I, I was listening to a radio program just a few day, days ago, and they were talking about how people used to be chastised for saying that the Earth was, was round. 
And so should we discount any theories until they can be proven wrong? Because uh, sometimes when you discount theories, sometimes that stifles thinking and learning. And But uh, in a nutshell, in one word, yes, I do believe that there was life on Mars, and I do believe that they will find it there yet. It'll be in the microbial format, but they will find something that's able to live there. Yeah, um, well, you were just going uh, saying that uh, people were uh, chastised for saying that the Earth was round. Well, uh, same thing. They were burned at the stake and, and called heretics when they thought uh, the Earth wasn't the center of the universe. Um, uh, and, and that seems like the norm when you go uh, back in history, that uh, if you don't subscribe to the you know, the church's belief or the government's belief, if you question what they're saying, you're uh, back in uh, 500 years ago, you considered a heretic. Now they have a new name for it. It's a conspiracy theorist. But it, right. you know, it's all the same thing. It's just a new time. Um, but right. going with uh, your saying about Mars, even if it wasn't, um, you know, saying we were actually humans, and we started off on Mars and came to Earth, there's also the possibility that there was microbial life on Mars and it was transported by a, uh, a meteor to Earth. Uh, and there's actually that famous meteor that they found, I think, in like Antarctica that they say was from Mars and had like, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, that picture. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, and, and I know actually some scientists actually say that is a possibility that uh, Earth, uh, life started on Mar Mars and was seeded to Earth. I, but, you know, I think everything is open when it comes to to life and to the universe and to knowledge and learning. I think everything should be thrown on the table. And, and I think you're right. It, it's quite possible that microbial life... You know, sometimes it makes me wonder. You know, I, they go into a I, I one of the websites that I own is Alberta Police Report, so I deal with police reports all day, and I, I read about the investigations the police conduct in the in the CSI type of of uh, ways that they do things. They go into a house and you know they they work really hard to discover what happened at a crime. So you take and you compare that to, and it's extremely difficult for them. And they have some of the most advanced technologies available to them right here, right now, to do that somewhere where they know that a crime has been committed and they're simply gathering evidence to prove or disprove their theories. So you compare that to the exploration of the universe and, you know, they'll go into uh, uh, some archaeological find, they find an item and they set it down on the table and, and all of a sudden they're telling a million things about what happened and what went on and, and all of this. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I see cops every day that have a hard time seeing something that's right in front of them, you know, and not that it's that it's easy to see, it's difficult. Yet sometimes we have these people coming up with theories based on you know, on what? You know, so in, I think when it comes to that comparison, it means that you should take every theory and no theory should be discounted until you, it can be proven that it's not true. Uh, I, and that, I, that uh, is exactly how the earth has progressed in time. As You know, back in the old days, the only people that used to know how to read and write were monks. Now everybody has that skill. And now everyone has more knowledge and, and intelligence to be able to to uh, to work towards a common goal of of humanity. And to me, it's 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 a no-brainer. There there is life beyond ours. I grew up in a religion that taught that we weren't the only ones in the universe, and there are other planets that are inhabited. And and uh, to me. That was very easy to believe, and uh, I would like to think that someday 
we will be able to know that for sure. And uh, I don't think that uh, that will be held from us forever. There will be a time when the average person knows exactly what's going on out there. Yeah, I, I don't think it can be held from us forever. It's just uh, it, it seems that they're, they they keep losing it. You know, every year there seems to be uh, a less and less control on part of the government, and it's it's come up to a point where it's either going to be the aliens or you know a government or somebody in, in the government just coming out and, and proving it once and for all. But uh, that kind of brings up uh, what I wanted to ask you about. Um, when you said that uh, it used to just be the monks that were able to write, and and, and of course they spoke Latin, if it, um, but that's kind of how governments have controlled people um, throughout history. Is there the people on the inside are the only ones that know what's really going on, and the little guys like me and you, you know, don't really know know the truth and don't really know what's going on, and. And that's not just with UFOs; that's with everything. But uh, what kind of really? Well, I think governments te- treat people on a need-to-know basis for everything. Yeah, exactly. But what really kind of t- ticks me off about all of that is what they're holding back from us and what they're not telling us. Because I, I feel that we could have done so much more uh, right now, even. It was, what, 40 years ago that the last Apollo mission, uh, 1972, I think it was, um, I mean, that was 40 years ago. Just look at the technology we have now. There's no doubt in my mind, if we would have set our minds to it, we would have been on Mars by now, and we would have, uh, you know, had a colony on the moon and on Mars, but it, it's just that the these these people who run things don't want that for whatever reason because it would be harder to control people on different planets uh, or, or, or or whatever. And that just kind of ticks me off because we could do so much better as a species. And I think it's important um, to not have all of our eggs in one basket, so to speak. You know what I mean? Well, I, I, I agree with you. and and uh, But I think there have been leaders in the past and I'm going to refer to Ronald Reagan who have he made during his presidency I believe it was either 7 or 11 references to extraterrestrial life right during speeches speeches at the United Nations where he would say things like "If what if there was a, a common threat to all mankind from outer space type of thing and how much it would change the world and we have to keep in mind that there's there's a few things that have happened in the world in the last 200 years that are probably having some effect on them telling anything that is real that may change the world. Religion has become an enormous big business with a lot of political clout, whether or not church and state are separate every war in the world has its roots in religion and so religion has become what what if they were to say that god wasn't a god that god was really an extraterrestrial that uh, who came and helped mankind and, and taught them and because it was so different for us that we saw him as god so there's that there's also the fact that if you're not fighting wars with each other, there I mean, what is it? in the state of Texas alone, 300,000 people depend upon their paychecks from the Defense Department. So if the war machine shuts down because the world is all working towards a, a, a threat from out, imagine the economic catastrophe. And perhaps maybe that's more what they're protecting than it is the feelings of the citizens of planet Earth. Money talks. Exactly. Money that's money's the root of all evil okay. too. Um it is. It yeah. Is. But uh you, you were talking about what if uh God was an alien. So what what that that kind of brings up the ancient alien question. What do you think uh, about all of that? 
Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of ancient aliens on, on television, and I've also watched the videos on YouTube where they debunk the programs, and they're both very convincing. Myself, this is my personal belief, and it has nothing to do with the programs. I think mankind has come and gone from the earth multiple times. I don't think that in in the society that we see on earth today is the first. I think there have been many. And I think there have been catastrophic events that have happened on the planet that have wiped out nearly everything and require, and lo- a lot of the knowledge was lost with it and uh, that uh, there were times when they had to almost start at scratch again but during those restarts they were getting help from somebody because they had they were they were making leaps and bounds you take a look at the the Mayans as an example some of the technologies that they had were leaps and bounds ahead of even what we're able to do in some instances today. And the building of the Great Pyramids and things like that. So I think humanity has come and gone multiple times on the earth. And that multiple times, somebody, something, a higher power, whether it's extraterrestrial or of divine nature, something has helped them. Because you don't go from the caveman that has no language to people that are sending people or building Hubble telescopes and things like that by accident. I I think that, uh, and and also I think there were people, you know, there there may be aliens who live among us today, and no one can really say whether there is or isn't. I know there have been lots of theories out there that said some, you know, like Edison was an alien or, you know, or some of these people that brought us some of the most advances in technology in such a short time. But uh, I think that they were human and that they, if there was help, it was either uh, extraterrestrial or divine. And I'm thinking I would lead, lean more to the extraterrestrial, that uh, someone whether it was through documentation that was left for them or someone teaching them. I believe someone helped in many instances. They've all, you you look at almost every culture on the planet and you go back into history and and they all have some common threads in there and that's that they all talk about people from the sky who, you know, brought this to them, who gave them language, who who did that or who did this and uh, the uh, you know the Sumerian texts and the the things like that some of the information that's provided there would tend to make you think that that somehow some way something was helping somewhere along the way and I truly believe that that extraterrestrials visit the earth regularly and uh, are continuing to provide information and knowledge to people not necessarily governments but to people to just an average person they're they're just visiting you know just a random person you think well not so much just a random person but uh, you know we've all heard of abductions and things like that I, I think there are are uh, perhaps people who have been given some knowledge, maybe subconsciously, who knows. I, I'm still, you know, sitting in the skeptic box when it comes to abduction theory. And But some of them are pretty convincing. And what's to say some people were abducted and they just don't talk about it or, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's, uh, but... I, I don't think that, uh, you know, E.T. is coming down to to Canada and stopping only in Ottawa to talk to the Prime Minister. I, I think that uh, there's just too many of them being seen around the planet. And, and for some reason, 
there's been some sort of a, a conspiracy to make anyone who believes in it uh, seem like they're a quack. But uh, that keeps a lot of good people from seeing what's actually happened in their lives, perhaps sharing that information that would help us know that uh, there was more to it than we know so far. Well, do you think that uh, it's by choice that they don't want us know, to know what's going on? Do you think that, that the aliens are, are telling the governments not to release this information or why do you think that is? Well, that's a difficult question and and could have multiple answers to it. I, I think that uh, if they are in touch with governments, I personally think that the governments, if they chose to keep that secretive, would do it more on their own accord than, than to the aliens. I, I think that if there are aliens here on Earth, that there's quite a possibility that they you know are already among us and uh, what's to say that they don't look just like us I am so for them you know I, I think it would could be a, a a situation where there's enough of them that they can have some control if that is the case without having to specifically you know, dictate to a government. I know there are those people out there who believe that aliens control the whole world. No, uh, the reptilians, yeah. Right. And, you know, and, uh, I I had a, a, a person explain to me one day here not too long ago in my living room that someone that I knew very well, they just came out and said, well, that person is a reptilian. And I'm like, oh, and, and they explained that to me and and they, they had a very convincing argument. And, and let's face it, the world is a different place. It's changed. For some reason now, it's uh, almost askew, 180 degrees, you know. So it's almost like a different way of thinking came into the world and, and has taken over. A lot of it is, you know, run by greed and and personal desire for power but I also think that there's a lot of people well let's just put it this way there's a lot of people in high positions that you look at that and you see that person you give your head a shake and say how did they ever get there and yeah. that that could be the explanation <laughs> Barack Obama for example <laughs> <laughs> well you saw my uh, spoof on finding life on Mars if you watch that video it was Obama that they found there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm Canadian and, and I don't have the right to vote in the uh, American election, but my parents and grandparents are Americans, and, and I actually have a, a relative that's a senator in Washington, and uh, I've had uh, cousins and uncles be governors of several states in the United States, but I don't know. I wouldn't have voted for, but we won't go there. Yeah, yeah, we're t we're talking about. I'm a Indians Republican. Also. If I were down there, I would be Republican. I'm sorry, Canada is a conservative nation, and which is equal to Republican. Yeah. Um, well, uh, this, uh, we're going to have to close it up real soon here. But I want to ask you one final question uh, about you're saying that uh, the aliens could already be among us. Uh, I mean, do you think we've all heard of the greys? Uh, do you think there's, like, different species that are here that are visiting us at different times? Or, Well, yes, I do. I, I, I've i uh, watched multiple videos where, where there are very educated, very honorable people saying there are dozens of species that visit us regularly of the greys and or of uh, aliens altogether, and I believe they say there are three species of greys. And it's the same as, as here on Earth, in my opinion. Let's pretend the Earth is the universe. We have multiple species here, and I think the, the expanded universe is mo no different. I don't think every alien is going to look humanoid. Uh, and uh, that, you know, potentially there were other types of beings that are intelligent that don't look like us. And greys could be one of them. Reptilians could be another. 
Mm. I think we have to look at everything with an open mind. And I just just before we leave here, I just want to address one thing with you. Um, in your preamble there, you mentioned whether cell phones would make a difference or whether they were proving that UFOs didn't exist because we don't have a flurry of UFO videos because everyone's carrying one in their pocket. Um, number one, a cell phone is not a good source to take a video of anything unless you're six feet away from it and uh, can hold that thing very, very steady. And I think there are still a lot of people out there. I, I just uh, uh, spent the afternoon at my granddaughter's birthday party and there was a whole lot of video cameras, a lot of cell phones, a lot of iPads shooting videos, but there were still a lot of cameras. And I think, like you, you know, the the uh, a lot of the videos that we saw from the Russian meteorite were shot on dash cams. So I think that they have actually helped. And as a matter of fact, it, on this last episode I have, I played here. Um, it has a uh, an instance on there of a dash cam catching a UFO by a power plant and then the person grabbing the dash cam and turning it towards the UFO so uh, I think in a lot of ways the extra cameras will help but uh, then again not everyone has their head pointed to the sky <laughs> and a lot of people when they come up against you know I work in the media business and and a lot of people when they come up uh, uh to a crime scene or something like that, they panic. They don't pull out a camera. They panic. And they get out of there. And a lot of people, you know, self-preservation. They see a UFO. Some people are just so... You know, my daughter, 28-year-old, will not watch UFO planets. She said, Dad, it just scares me to pieces. And she said, you know, to me, that just to watch something like that... so. If my daughter's out in the middle of nowhere, which is everywhere here in Western Canada, uh, she might not uh, see a... Or if she saw a UFO, she'd just panic. <laughs> she'd run like hell. Who, who cares how many cameras she has? <laughs> but well, anyway, so I, I think we'll still see a lot of videos coming our way. Yeah, well, thank you for coming on, Darren. And uh, I wish we had more time, but we have to get to our next guest here real soon. Uh, his name, uh, Darren, just hold on for a minute. I want to say goodbye to you uh, when we go to the commercial. Just hold on. Uh, our next guest is uh, Mark Howitt, uh, who is going to discuss with us uh, the Sandy Hook conspiracy and all these shootings that have been going on. He is the founder of World Public Union, and we'll have him on right after this break. So stay tuned uh, for that. And welcome back to In the Dark Friday Night. I'm David Kirk, and what an interesting last hour we just had on with Darren Crapo of UFO Planet. His website was for you to see .tv .com. Um And our next guest is Mark Howitt of the World Public Union. Uh, and I'm going to let him talk about that. Uh, he also did two uh, documentaries recently about the Aurora shooting and the Sandy Hook shooting. Um, Mark, well, welcome to the show, and thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me on to discuss these things. Uh, well, let's uh, just go right in and 
tell uh, our listeners what exactly the World Public Union is? Um, well, the World Public Union is essentially exactly what the word says it is, a uh, world, which is global, public, which is non-government citizens, and union, which is a group of people fighting for human rights, civil rights, things like that. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty much just trying to get people to uh, wake up to what's really going on and kind of have a... Uh, yeah, like it's not... Uh, it's just like a giant group of people. Like if, if anybody can join, it doesn't cost anything. It's just people that are really waking up to the truth of what's going on in the world uh, when it comes to governments, uh, corruption, war, military, famine, uh, you know, the uh, secret societies, um, human testing, human experimentation, um, GMOs. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of things that are wrong with the world. And the World Public Union is essentially a way to try to clean up the world, um, doing it you um, publicly essentially like uh, anybody from the public that wants to do so and it's a the, the website's still under development but essentially what it'll do is um, give people training um, if they need help to, to figure out how to help in their community or how to be heard how to how to get petitions out there um, how to clean up the fluoride from their drinking water there's all sorts of things that we're going to be tackling with the World Public Union but uh, the, the website's pretty new so it's just uh, it's still in development that's uh, worldpublicunion.com, and you can find uh, a link. Org, actually. Dot org. Org. Yeah. Right. You can find a link to that on our website. Um, so, Mark, I wanted to ask you, you did two documentaries on uh, the, the recent shootings. Uh, I mean, w w talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, obviously, you, you kind of think it's a conspiracy. Uh, t t tell us about that, especially the Sandy Hook. Yeah, like... Um I made the James Holmes conspiracy documentary uh, shortly after that crime happened because when I uh, when I seen the, the news reports and I seen what was happening, I, I had a lot of questions and it was really bothering me like to the point where I needed to like ask these questions somehow. And I made documentaries before, so I wanted to kind of tackle that case, and that kind of got me into uh, into the looking at that kind of aspect of uh, of shootings and stuff. And then the Sandy Hook shooting occurred, and it took me a while to actually um, make that documentary, but um, a lot of people were telling me, you know, you should really look into that because it's kind of similar. Like, there's multiple suspects, and there's, there's a lot of similar aspects to that case um, that's similar to Aurora. So I, I started taking a look into the Sandy Hook stuff, and sure enough, uh, you know, it seemed like there was a conspiracy again. Um, the government, It seems like the government uh, had pre-planned knowledge and... And it, there's a lot of questionable aspects with the Sandy Hook case, definitely. And in the documentary, I tried to um, I tried to tackle a lot of the aspects of the case that people were questioning. Um, I wanted to kind of like there's a lot of questions that people were asking, and I know some of the things in the documentary have since been debunked, and new information came out, and and some of it is uh, is not accurate anymore because of the timing and stuff like that. But there is a lot of material that's in the, the documentary I made that that's still questionable and I even feel that some of it's evidence that could be used in court so yeah well I uh, I'm not I, I kind of agree with you but I don't really believe that the whole thing was a conspiracy I think that there was a shooting yeah. I, don't, I don't believe in the whole crisis actor thing but yeah me neither um, I, the reason why is because there's so many people involved you know so and that's where a lot of people actually critic the, the film that I made because they think that uh, I, I claim that there was actors when I clearly state in the film that I believe that there was actually people affected by this and that it was a black ops of some sort. Black ops. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, that there's so many different things to tackle. I'm going to try to get into all of it. But mm -hmm. when you're talking about black ops, uh, one of the most glaring uh things I think that about this whole Sandy Hook was uh, those those other the other people that they supposedly uh, arrested um, the ones uh, you can look this up on I think it was on Alex Jones when I saw it uh, of the two people in the woods uh, and then there was the guy in the car that uh, was in the front of the car uh, so what, what do you think about all the other people involved it, I don't think it was just uh, Holmes uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, you mean Adam Lanza in regards to uh, Sandy Hook? Yeah. Um, yeah, the Aurora is the same situation, though, with James Holmes. Um, there is multiple witnesses that say that there was another person in there, um, that, that someone had to have let him in the theater. We have yet to see 
um, video footage publicly that there were, that he entered the theater and that he actually went into the back door because I'm not I'm not exactly 100 percent sure if there was a camera back there, but most theaters do have that and they had cameras. If they had a security system that would warn people that there was a murder in the building, then they obviously had to have security cameras as well in there. So we haven't seen any of the footage, but uh, according to the court reports that I've been reading online in the news reports with James Holmes, um, they they did review video evidence of of him inside of the theater. He's walking to the booths and then he goes in and sits down in the theater. So apparently they've reviewed it in court and they've also reviewed video of him inside of gun stores purchasing or trying to purchase guns and stuff like that. So um, whether or not we will see that publicly, I don't know. But that's that's another reason why I started the World Public Union because we need some transparency in government. And the reason why there's so many people saying there's all these conspiracies going on is because we're not being shown any real evidence to prove what the government is saying. And it, there's so many faulty li- fault lines when it comes to the news reports and uh, and the government and, the, and uh, authorities reporting on these events. When you really take a look at the evidence and the witnesses, it's it doesn't add up, you know. Yeah, well, with Sandy Hook, you were talking about the cameras in Sandy Hook. They haven't still have yet to release the uh, the footage in the school for whatever reason. And I think they actually installed cameras there before that, were like up you know, like HD and all that, and they still haven't released it for whatever reason. It kind of begs the question: What are they hiding? Yeah, like I've heard uh, somebody say that they they don't they didn't have cameras inside of the school in the hallways. But they did have one at the front door for sure. That's a given because it, it was, uh, I think it was state law. They, they like all the schools um, now have that system implemented. Um, they, the Sandy Hook um, recently, yeah, got the security system installed to, to get up to par with the state code. And uh, so they have video of whoever entered the, the building. And it seems like there was multiple people that entered the building because there was jackets found on the ground beside the car. And there's uh, parents that were at the school that ran away from the school after they heard the gunshots and noticed that the front glass was broken. They noticed that uh, the car, the suspect vehicle, the, the Lanza vehicle, had all four doors open. So that would indicate that, you know, somebody opened all the car doors, whatever they were doing. And that kind of indicates that there was multiple suspects. And now the police or whoever was on the scene destroyed that evidence by closing the doors on the car. So we, we've we never seen uh, any actual um, evidence proving that the car doors were open, just this parent's uh, witness testimony. But it still is a witness testimony, so essentially it could be used in court. Well, it wasn't that car. It wasn't even Lanza's car, was it? It was uh, registered as somebody else, right? Uh, no, it's uh, I've I've actually seen the reports that, it was, that um, Nancy Lanza was paying for a Honda Civic vehicle. So... And um, I, I've also seen uh, paperwork from Chris Rodia uh, on the car payments that he's been making, and uh, they're not for the they're not for a black Honda Civic. So yeah. it's been proven that you know that that wasn't Rodia's car. That at least for, from what I, from my research and what I've dug up, uh, I I totally think that that was a land, the land of vehicle. Um, I think that it was actually stolen from the house and driven there uh, just to set up there to make it look like it was it was. Uh, that it was Adam Lanza, because Adam Lanza's uh, social security death index date states that he was dead on the 13th, December 13th, and the crime actually happened on the 14th. So if his uh, death index re- reports that he was actually dead on the 13th, then um, then he was killed the day before, and he didn't do that shooting inside of the school. That his body was maybe just brought there. Yeah, by whoever was in the in the vehicle, and that's why all the car door called uh, the doors in the car were open and that's why there was multiple jackets found that's why there's multiple suspects running and they were actually detained and we haven't been told who they were because the government wants to cover that fact yeah well the obvious question is who do you think they were well the, uh the newtown b the local newspaper for the for uh kinetic for newtown connecticut um reported that uh authorities told them that it was an off-duty tactical officer from another district but they never gave what district, they never gave his name, they never gave any information in regards to who this person was, and that was only one suspect. And then you have the person who lives in uh, Connecticut, Roy Lowe, who gave a testimony to uh, to the news that he, that he claims that there was a, a suspect sitting in the front of the vehicle, inside of the front of the police vehicle. And he looks right at the suspect and describes what he looks like while he's looking at the reporter, and the reporter... Um, 
you know, he obviously was told not to film the suspect in the vehicle because we're, we've never been shown footage of who it was in the front of the vehicle or there's no pictures or anything that I've seen that are actually legitimate that show anything. So, you know, if he's seeing somebody sitting in the side of the front of the police vehicle, then you'd think that it was somebody that was law enforcement or somebody that was connected that maybe had an excuse and maybe they were arrested as a suspect but later released, you know. But the fact is, we haven't been told who it is, what unit they're they are from, why they were there, why they were running from police and detained as a suspect in the first place. And on the police recordings, you can hear multiple people get detained. So it's not just one person, there's multiple people. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they're not going to put a criminal in the front of the car, so it, it had to be somebody that they trusted, at least. Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, whether you believe all of this or, or not, I'll, I'll let you just. I'll let you uh, listeners decide. Uh, we're just giving you the facts and uh, my guest's opinion here. But also, um, what do you think uh, the whole point of this was? If it was a government uh, staged event, what do you think? Uh, really, was it gun, for gun control? Or what? Um, not only gun control, but I think it was for freedom of speech, um, targeting uh, just to just like nine eleven. It, it was to implement more control over people. Um, they're going to be passing new laws and all sorts of things now because of this, and they're, that's the way they do it, you know what I mean? Whether it's a real attack or a false attack, false flag attack, um, they, they orchestrate these events so that they can make it easier to pass law. And it's a psychological attack on the human mind is what it is because people aren't expecting this. Um, you know, they, they, they see this on the news and they see all this stuff happening and then they, uh, they automatically get into a state of panic and fear. And when they're when they're in this state of fear, they're they're more subjective to to uh, to make changes or to 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 create a solution for the problem that's ahead of them. And a lot of times they don't fully understand the problem. They just they take the bait, hook, line, and sinker, and then the laws are passed, and then our freedoms are slowly diminished. And they're they're attacking the constitution, and they're attacking all sorts of things, you know. And I'm from Canada, you're from America, but. Um, essentially, we're, our countries are involved with the, the um, uh, sorry, the uh, United Nations. So the United Nations is the one world government system. So the United States kind of adheres to the United Nations policy. And in fact, uh, when they're passing laws in the United States, they have both a copy of the uh, United Nations Charter and they have a copy of the Constitution. And if the United Nations Charter outbids the uh, Constitution, then it, uh, the decision is made in favor of the United Nations. So the Constitution is essentially insuperior in compared to the uh, the United Nations Charter. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that too, but I wanted to ask you first, um, I'm sure you followed the Chris Dorner story pretty closely. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think that was a false flag too? or? Um, that's hard to say, but um, I, I genuinely feel that he was trying to make a statement. Um, I've read his manifesto. It's actually available on the World Public Union website in the documents section. You can download it. Um, I have a lot of declassified documents available up there for people to read um, if they're interested in this, this kind of thing to, to learn about how governments cover up things and, and eventually the truth comes out. But um, the Dorner manifesto is available on there, and, it, and I've read it, and I don't know, it's like, it seems like he just kind of had a he had a problem with the system in Los Angeles, and he had a problem fighting through the system and uh, and with other officers, and nobody was believing his story and stuff. So he took things to a different level, you know. And it's it's hard to say because there's a lot of things in that manifesto that are questionable, like his um, his appreciation for for George Bush. That's very questionable. Like I don't know anybody that really appreciates what that what that man has done. Yeah. Um, so for him to say that in his manifesto is kind of questionable. And there's a few other things too in there that are just kind of weird, you know, that just kind of don't make sense. Maybe it was prefabricated, but apparently that was sent to the media before he did the attacks and the media withheld the information from the public. They didn't tell anybody. I'm sure intelligence agencies knew and, and local uh, authorities knew, but uh, the public didn't know about this until, until after he was dead. So, yeah, well, and then there was, um, uh, the uh, they they supposedly found his ID in San Diego and then found his ID again next to his body. I mean, unless you're under 21, there's really no point in having two IDs. That that, that doesn't seem to really make sense. Huh? Yeah, I haven't heard that actually. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I was yeah, on Infowars, I think. But go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things with the Dorner case that I still have to uh, look up and and check out. Um, 
lately I've I've been uh, just working with the on the World Public Union website and and trying to get things like that. And I'm working on a new documentary on uh, on some crazy stuff that I sh- I'm not really gonna say what it's about yet, but uh, I hope to have that done pretty soon. I just want to build up the the suspense and kind of not give it away, you know. Yeah, I understand. But um, you were uh, talking about George Bush, but he also was a supporter of uh, Obama and Joe Biden and all that. And it kind of doesn't really make any sense because, you know, he's a big fan of them and then he's going around shooting people. So I think that maybe, um, or it's been pointed out that possibly that they have this huge Obama supporter and yeah. um, have him be the, the next shooter because nobody would think that. I mean, who would they, why would they have a, a Obama supporter? So it kind of pe- throw people off like us from the scent. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's like those people, those parents at Sandy Hook, how um, on the news they're, they're sitting there with their daughter and, their, and even Anderson Cooper uh, with the letter that he read um, saying that the kids wish that uh, Obama would pass gun laws, making it only for military and army to have them. And then in Dorner's manifesto, he talks about disarming the people as well, you know. So that's that's another uh, questionable aspect. Yeah, well, we're talking about uh, uh, the end game here. And I think one of the biggest factors in getting rid of guns is getting rid of, like, cops and former cops' right to bear arms. Because you've heard of the Oath Keepers, I'm sure. Um, they're one of the biggest supporters of the Second Amendment here. So if you're able to get rid of cops, especially retired cops, because I think they're like one of the largest sect of the population that owns guns, it would be a lot easier just to disarm the average Joe when the cops are disarmed. Yeah. Like, I think they're going to eventually move for a a total banning of of, of firearms, Um, not just in America, but in other countries. Um, This has been discussed, and... uh, if you really look at the United Nations and the moves they've made in the last, uh, I don't know how many years, um, they've definitely been trying to do this over the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's America is actually, and Canada, and uh, there's, there's a few countries that are left that, are, that still have the, the freedom and the, and the liberty and the right to bear arms. So. Well, well, America, I think the re- one of the reasons why it's the last to go is it's the hardest to take. Uh, we all, every, yeah. There's so many people that own guns. We have the Constitution ingrained in our culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like uh, you know India or China where, or even Australia where they've already taken the guns. It's going to be a lot harder yeah. to, to do that here. Um, and I, I, I commend you Americans for that. And honestly, I think that uh, if anything were to happen uh, in in retrospect to like a civil war or anything like that, um, I I strongly hope that that your Canadian your fellow Northerners would would support you guys in that, and I I fully would would command and recommend for people to do that. Yeah, well, I have a lot of respect for Canadians. Um, I know they would do that, but uh, yeah, we have to stick up for each other's freedoms, and and it's not just a, a a sovereign issue i think or a country's issue i think it's more than that i think it's a, a human issue human issue yeah exactly um so well we were talking about sandy hook aurora and chris dorner i think that there has to be another false flag to really push everything um you know to the forefront to there really needs to be something because sandy hook has kind of gone out of the news and people have already forgotten about it do you think there's going to be another false flag on the way coming soon um it's hard to say really um again this would have to be my own uh speculation on the matter but there's definitely something brewing i could feel it in the air it's in the energy it's in the vibe of the planet and uh i feel that uh if something does happen it might not only involve the united states i think other countries might be involved in what's coming and we're going to see something very violent and and uh disturbing in the in the near future and that's the way these these uh so-called elites operate you know what i mean they they always have to orchestrate these events and and uh there's they're trying to take countries in the middle east they're still trying to get their foothold in there and uh and they already have in a lot of countries in that area and it's just going to keep getting worse i think and uh just with the the disarming issue um like China and and stuff like that are really pushing for Amer- uh, Obama to disarm the Americans. So there's a lot of turmoil going on right now between 
people against their governments, you know what I mean? And that's the main thing that there is there's a, a big, uh, people are waking up to the government. That's what it is all around the world. It's not only uh, an American thing or a Canadian thing. It's all around the world. People are waking up and they don't want to take it anymore. And I think that's why it hasn't happened yet is because people are waking up to what's going on. If, if it wasn't for people realizing what is really going on, this we couldn't have been under, you know, a dictatorship or whatever they want to do with us years ago but thank god we're actually waking up and starting to fight back right now yeah now is the time and uh you could even say that it's been prophesied a long time ago that this would happen um or you could say that it's orchestrated um i'm a really big fan of william cooper and actually in one of his interviews um you know uh he says right in in the interview like either people are following the book of revelation uh, like point for point, making sure that it's happening, or that those uh, revelations and prophecies were really true, and and what's coming is coming, and uh, that's that's an interesting uh, factor to point out, I think. Well, do you think that, in your personal opinion, do you think that what's going on right now is end times, or is end times coming, or? Uh, not end times, no, but I believe that we're we're heading into a, a very bloody era of human civilization and um, I believe that there's going to be a, a large-scale war um, fought between people and their the control of the government um, I'm not sure how large-scale this would be but I've I believe that there's people orchestrating this too and they want it to happen and that's why I believe that it's going to happen because these people control everything and they've everything that they've ever wanted has happened already and that's why they're in control right now. That's how they've done it for centuries. Um, kings and rulers, um, if you look at the American presidents, every single one of them has been related by blood except for one, Martin Van uh, Buren. And uh, that tells you something right there that, you know, people can vote for whoever they want, but it doesn't matter because whoever is picked is predetermined by their, by their heritage and their bloodline and their uh, hereditary traits. Um, where they come from, where they've been bred. Um, that's why these people are, don't go to um, to public schools. They go to private schools. The public schools are for the for the random uh, folk or the commoners, as they call them. So there's a huge state of control of, of government over the people, and that's what's happening right now. Is people are starting to see this, and they're saying, you know, this is this this is disgusting. This is a disgusting act of human behavior, and it's time to stop. Exactly. Well, and that's why they don't eat our food with the GMOs and that's why exactly. they don't drink our water with the fluoride in it. They have their own, you know, things set aside. They have their bunkers when this is going to go down. And uh, yeah, they, uh, exactly. And the organic food is priced more and all the gar garbage food like, um, you know, potato chips and junk food and sugars and, um, you know, non-real foods. Um, Chemical-based foods are, are the cheapest that you could buy. So the people that are really struggling to get by in life are the ones that are eating like crap, and, and they're getting cancer, and they're getting all these diseases, which, by the way, were all created by the government as well, um, in labs, testing on animals and all that stuff. Um, pretty much every disease that's modern that's known to mankind has been created in a laboratory from government testing and then released on the public, whether on purpose or accidental. So that's... That's another issue that we have um, that I'm trying to address at the World Public Union. Vaccinations, they're not needed. Um, you know what I mean? They're just trying to put more um, soft metals into your blood. Um, that's And another interesting thing, too, is um, <laughs> is they're trying to control us in every way they can. Like uh, cell phones, they all, they all are built now with video cameras on them. And that's so that like they have um, buildings and uh centers where people are paid and they go into these places and they work they sit on a computer all day and they watch people that's all they do is they watch people through their video cameras on their cell phones and on their laptops and things like that and they can tune into anybody's computer they have gps's on everything now um you know what i mean they're they couldn't implement the rfid chip i remember a long time ago they were trying to put it under the skin and and um, chip everyone microchip so that they could keep track of them and you could just scan your wrist if you want to buy something at the store but they couldn't do that because people wouldn't accept that so now they've figured out with um, other ways ulterior ways to track everyone and that's one of them is cell phones and then there's the smart meters too that uh they're really trying to push right now exactly and um, i had a military guy confirm that i was in um 
I was in St. Paul, Minnesota at a hotel on a tour I was with with a band once and uh, there was a military guy just got off um, from overseas and he was uh, he was drunk and out of his cabin. He had a smoke with me out in front of the building and, and you know, he started talking about how his, his operation was going overseas and then he started crying and telling me like, you know, we, I, I just wish I could change the world, you know, because we started talking about some real things and then I asked him about the cell phone thing and he pulled out this cell phone I'd never seen before. It was some crazy new one. He said he just got it that day for being released from the army and uh and uh he 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 confirmed with me there that yeah, there's they track you with your cell phone. So well, uh a cell phone. <laughs> well, bringing up the veterans and stuff, they're really pushing right now to disarm the veterans. It just came out uh today. Uh, I, I was on Infowars, I think, um, but it, it's going to be. In, I think it, it, they got it from a mainstream article that uh, letters are being sent to veterans um, that have PTSD or other sort of uh, disorders like that, that they are no longer allowed to own guns, and if they do own guns, somebody from the Veterans Administration will come and. Uh, take it from them and i think i think it, we're getting real close now uh to the the trigger here and i think this could be the trigger uh because when you try to disarm a a, a veteran who fought for his country yeah they're gonna fight back mm -hmm. that's uh, a slap in the face right there totally these people um go over there and they they don't even know why they're really going over there in the first place they're just trying to serve their country and be patriotic and you know do the right thing and, and make an make an honest living um, however way they can, you know, and, and they get into the army and they, they enlist and then they go overseas and a lot of times they're not told the real reasons why they're there, like they're, they're there for other reasons than the public's even told and then they get involved in these operations and they're not allowed to talk when they come home so they get depressed and, and then they, yeah, exactly, they're using that to uh, target these people to disarm them it seems and that's, that's just, that's disrespectful and distasteful in my opinion. Yeah, in my opinion too. Um, we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back with Mark Howitt after. And we're back on In the Dark Friday Night with my second hour guest, Mark Howitt of the World Public Union. That's worldpublicunion.org. Uh, Mark, who are these people that are trying to enslave us? Um, it's essentially of various groups from all over the place um there's the financial like it's it seems like it's a giant mafia it's the largest crime organization on the planet it seems um that's my opinion on the matter um it and it's hard to identify who's involved um you know i've heard people say that it's uh that it's the freemasons but it's not entirely the freemasons you know what i mean um the freemasons uh have the potential to to rise to become this and under and to uh, attain the knowledge that's needed to to do this kind of thing. But I don't believe it's all Masons. I think a lot of Masons are satisfied receiving their third degree Master Mason and then they stay at that level. Um, but there is certainly a lot of Masons that rise to higher levels and choose branches of Masonry that they join. Um, other secret societies um, where they where they learn about these certain um, aspects of control over the human humankind and um it's it's really hard to say um well i've heard people say that it's the jews or it's the zionists i've heard people say that it's the satanists or it's the occultists 
um, you know what I mean? It's uh, mm-hmm. it's it's hard to say, but it's it's really a control from all different areas. Like it's um, it's financially they control us financially, they control us religiously, they control us um, dependently because we need water to survive. They're controlling the water right now, and they're trying to uh, to um, to remove the water from the public and, and charge every drop of water they can to make money from that and uh, these are the basic necessities we need for life so it's essentially the people that are that are um, limiting us to our full potential as human beings that are that are guilty that are the criminals here because they're um, profiting millions uh, billions sorry trillions of dollars even um, off off of other people trying to get by in life and surviving and and going without you know what I mean yeah well do you you, you don't think it's like uh, the Illuminati uh, there's actually an actual like group of people that have been running the the actual world for years, like the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. I'm sh- I'm sure that they they like I'm almost certain that that members of their families are part of it. Yeah, um, they always have been um, throughout the ages, and a lot of times uh, that this power is just passed on hereditarily through the ages, um, through their descendants and. Uh, and that's why a lot of the royal families marry, like intermarry. They marry their family members because it keeps the bloodline pure and uh, keeps the wealth in the family. And they've been doing this for years. It's even still, um, you know, what I mean. The prince right now and and Kate, they're they're related. So that's happening right now, even with the uh, with the Windsor family. So, well, uh, you know, back in the uh, when there was the Age of Enlightenment and all of these mm-hmm. monarchies. Uh, tumbled and they were replaced by republics and dictatorships. But when the, these royal families that have been ruling the country uh, for you know hundreds, if not thousands, of years, they weren't just going to give up their power that quickly. What I, I think probably happened is they went underground mm-hmm. and uh, kind of all what you know kind of came together and pro- maybe formed this idea back 100, 200 years ago. Um, yeah, well, Adam Weishaupt uh, and essentially uh, the Rothschilds founded the Illuminati. Uh, Mayor Amschel Rothschild um, was essentially the uh, the one whose idea it was to do this, and um, he he enlisted Adam Weishaupt, who uh, studied at the Vatican in the church and and stuff like that. So he was pretty well educated in politics, um, political sciences, and stuff like that. So um, he enlisted the help of Weishaupt, and they created the Illuminati, which was actually called the Order of the Perfectionables at first, but then they renamed it to the Order of the Illuminati. And um, they were banned outright in, in Bavaria and uh, most of Europe, and they, they went underground, like you said. Um, so that's that's where people have a hard time tracing them, because they infiltrated the lodges of Freemasonry, um, Illuminati, and... Uh, and because of this, some of the members of, of Freemasonry may still study the Illuminati, and even in the higher degrees, they may study um, the works of the Illuminati, and I'm sure that they do. Um, I'm certain of this, actually, but um, the thing is, a lot of this is, it's, it's hard to uh, it's hard to say who who it is and to blame a single person. It's more organizations and stuff like that that they hide behind a corporation is essentially the same rights as a human being almost. So they have, uh, they get away that way. And I think if we broke down these organizations and these people would, would scurry out from the, from behind the, the, the dresser, I guess you could say, and, the, and you'd be able to identify them, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, the Illuminati was, you know, getting a lot of news in America, at least recently because of the Super Bowl and Beyonce supposedly flashing an Illuminati hand sign. And then, like 15 minutes after she did that, the lights went out. Uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, they, they've been doing uh, weird symbolism in the, uh, especially in the Olympics too in London. They've, there's a lot of symbolism there. Um, they they use symbolism and cryptology to uh, hide their meanings and messages so that if you are enlightened to this wisdom, when you're watching it on TV, you can kind of see what's going on, and you're like watching a separate show almost because you're aware of this information that's being transmitted to you, but other people aren't, and. And uh, when you when you notice these things and you can kind of see what the symbols mean and stuff like that, it kind of makes a lot more sense when you're watching this kind of stuff. And you can, it's this it's sickening, you know what I mean? Yeah. That see that they're doing this right in front of our faces, and and most people will call you crazy, you know. When you try to tell them about this, if if they don't get it right away and they don't have the pre, uh, the knowledge, um, you know, it it's hard to wake people up because they don't have any initial knowledge of this, you know. They've been watching their their Super Bowls and uh, they've been uh, 
programmed by the media and they, they you know every friday and saturday night they spend their night at the club and they spend all their money at the bar and and then they go come home and they feel like crap the next day and the whole weekend that they're not working they feel like crap because they're hung over and they sp- they stay up all night partying and wasting their lives away and that's what they want you know what i mean that's why the media uh, the, the commercials are programming us to do that to spend our money on fast food and and then they're killing us with the fast food and they just want us to diminish our potential so that nobody can rise up and actually become something. And they, they also know that if the human race did did awaken fully, that there would be no chance that they would be able to continue with this control they have over us. So. Yeah, well, uh, that that's one of the things that really takes me off and, and, and makes me really hate what these globalists are doing other than the fact they just want to kill everybody but they're diminishing the the human race as a whole Mm -hmm. um you know for so long we could be so great i mean uh i was just talking to our last guest we were talking about ufos and i brought up the fact that it was 40 years ago that the last apollo mission back in 1972 i mean it's been 40 years and we haven't went to the moon since then and i think if it wasn't for these globalists controlling us there's no doubt in my mind we wouldn't have had a base on a moon. We would have been on Mars, but uh, yeah, I actually, to my belief, I think that they're already there and they're just not telling us. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. think that they're really all, all of the technology that they're that they let us know about is really exactly that. They're letting us know about just that technology, and and to, to most people, it's it's really like phenomenal uh, advanced technology. But they have way more advanced technology than what we know about. Uh, and and there's so much evidence pointing towards this, like that that they're not like especially NASA and stuff like that, that they're not telling us the truth about things. They withhold things all the time. So I I don't know. Like I think that they even have um, a base on the moon right now, and like even a community there of people like mining or whatever. Like I wouldn't say they're mining full scale, but they definitely have have that technology to do that. Yeah, maybe that's why we don't really see pictures of the moon anymore. Yeah. But, um. They don't want to talk about it, you know, because... You know, and on the, another reason why I don't think they let just anybody go there is it would be a lot harder for them to control because, you know, you have a people here on Mars, you have them on the moon, then you have them on Earth. It would be a lot harder c- to control everybody. Yeah, um, like, I was listening to your, to your conversation with Alaska, and you were discussing a lot about extraterrestrials and, and, and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, that's that's definitely a possibility that... that there is beings from other other uh, other planets and stuff like that that you know control it and this is only one planet and they 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 dull us down to think that th- this is our limited space like that we belong on the earth and we can't really travel outside of it to just to kind of you know confuse us and make us believe that it's impossible to go distances when it's really not so um yeah well uh there's got to be another planet like Earth, you know what I mean? That where you could breathe the air and you can walk around. And there's got to be, there's got to be at least like lots of them, you know. There's no and, doubt in my mind. If you just, it's just look, it's simple math. If you just look at the numbers, we don't even know if there's life on Mars or on, you know, a moon of Saturn. And there's thousands of other solar systems like ours just in this uh, galaxy. And then there's, yeah. or billions, I should say. And then there's billions of galaxies. So if you just look at the number, it's almost impossible to say that we're the only one yeah exactly and that's that's the thing you know they don't want us to know about this like there's so much like uh it's it's just it's i get so worked up about this sometimes i just wish i could tell a million people i wish a million people were listening to some some of the things i i'd I'd say because um i've never really heard other people say say some of the things that i'm saying but uh the human race is brought up from a very young age, like from birth even, like when a, when a baby is born and a child is born, um, their psychology is very different than ours. They, they're in a sadist state of mind and they're, they're susceptible to taking on um, imagination. They're more, they're more vividly imagining, imaginative and they, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's the world that they live in that they're brought up in that changes and shapes their opinions and their values and, and creates the human beings they are when they get older. So these children, uh, our children, are being born into this world and being raised in this world thinking inside of the box, inside of the matrix. And they, they, they can never get out of this matrix because their whole life they've been brought up inside of it and they think that they're restricted to it. And the, the culprits of this are the media, the government, uh, you know, the world government, agency, world agencies, um, industry, corporations, banks, 
Um, these are all the people that are implementing this giant matrix system on us and, and making us believe that this is this is what we are. This is the potential of the human being, but that is false. That is false information. They're lying to you. Um, we have so much potential as the human race, um, as hu as human beings, and and we just don't use it because of the system that's been bestowed upon us. And and when children are born into this system, they don't think anything different. Um, an Afri a child that's born in Africa has a very different life than a than an American child or a Canadian child or even a European child. They have very different lives, and the African child is brought up in a culture, in a community where it's very family orientated, but they they have so much struggle because they don't have clean drinking water, they don't have food to survive. Often the children are taking care of each other and being the parents while the parents are dead from AIDS or, or diseases that, that run rampant over there. And these, if if only they had the same chance that we do, you know what I mean? They would they That would be the ideal human being right there because they have no giant cities and corporations they don't have to worry about money surviving they grow their own crops they have their own um you know their farm and their livestock and they feed their family that way but these corporations and the governments of these of these uh countries diminish these people to the point where they can't get up to that level yeah well i think you're dead on that we need to kind of go back to um, a, a simpler time, I guess you mm -hmm. can say, in, in the sense that we we rely on our family and our neighbors, and and, and not the government to yeah. do everything for us. We need to family uh, first. That's the key right there. You know what I mean? That's when you have children and you have parents and you have uh, grandparents and you have uncles and that's that's what matters. You know your family and that's why we're here is to have friends and family and. Obviously, to, co to contribute to the community, you need to maintain and establish the community. You have to work like jobs and stuff like that. You obviously need to contribute, otherwise the society would fail. But there's there's got to be a different way, you know, of living where where we don't have this restriction. I think most people are responsible to make their own decisions, and they're sentient beings, and they they choose their own path for the most part. But there's always the government there that's blocking them in a lot of ways. And and when you grow up in this world, and that's that's the reality that you're stuck with then you grow on to believing that there's nothing else and you don't you don't really realize your full potential you know well yeah i, th I think it was a david ike who did a, a a thing back in like the 1990s and he said if you want uh, a perfect way to indoctrinate and put your beliefs on uh, the young generation just look at the american education system the parents give away their kids for eight yeah. hours a day, five days a week, you know, for more than half the year. It's the perfect system to brainwash kids. Yeah, it starts out even sooner than that because children are brought to daycare before they go to school, so that kind of um, trains their brain to wake up early in the morning, go to the go to these places where they're away from their parents and in under the care of somebody else who's going to educate their child and teach them the values of life. And the whole time they're being separated from their family more and more. And I mean, I have I have two kids, you know what I mean, and and I I try to devote as much of my life and time to them uh, as I can, and it's really important that uh, that I'm there for them, you know what I mean, and that's that's number one for me, and I'm sure they they have the same mentality that I do, that their kids are they have to bring them up and and teach them the right things, and that's very important for me is to teach my kids um, the realities of life and the and being respectful and responsible and nice and caring and passionate rather than fearful and hateful and and regretful and and those negative things that society instills on people yeah and uh well i think that kind of brings up the question how can we beat these overlords how can we you know finally free ourselves uh, of this yeah well that's that's the question that i asked myself a, a couple of years ago i said i remember the day actually i i said to myself how there's got to be a solution to this you know there has to be a way that these people can be overthrown or something that like at least people will wake up and 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 make a difference and change the world that they live in like there's got to be something that could do this because um for for decades now people have tried and they've protested um and it's gotten them nowhere there's been no change um as a result of these protests or anybody like that any anybody that's actually sent letters to their congress or or their government to make change or their opinions because they don't listen to the people you know you could send them a million letters and they still wouldn't read half of them or they wouldn't care because they already have their mindset before laws are even passed or changed or 
or executive orders are passed or anything like that, you know? So I was thinking, I'm like, there's got to be a way to, like, change this. And that's why when I came up with the idea of the World Public Union, it's like a union of of the world. Like anybody, any country, it doesn't matter what world, what city you live in, what country you live in. Um, if you're awake and you are aware of these problems that we face as, as a human species, um, you need to, you know, educate others around you about what's going on and kind of um, find each other. There's got to be a way to find like-minded individuals in your community that you can work with together to, you know, address your local politicians, to um, sign petitions, to put up posters around your town, to uh, to uh, make people aware of bills that they're passing or uh, uh, to oppose bills that they're passing even, um, to oppose military um, advancements they're making, to oppose fluoride in your water, in your drinking water. Um, right now, Europe is pretty much dry of fluoride. Um, I believe there's only 10% of the countries left, or even less than that, actually, that have fluoride left in their water. Um, most of Europe is cleaned out of that, but it's only in, uh, it seems, North America, like uh, Canada, United States, and a couple other countries where fluoride is in the drinking water supply. And that's a big one right there. We need to get that out of our water because that's that has an effect on your brain and, and your your consciousness and just your thought, your your behavior, your actions, it has a, a severe effect on that. And when you're drinking tap water all the time and it's got fluoride in it, um, there's medical tests that prove that it's harmful for you. It's it's actually um, considered a, a, ra- uh, a, sorry, a toxic waste. It's actually considered as a toxic waste. So people are drinking toxic waste every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's a known fact that fluoride is in uh, a, a toxic yeah. Uh, but when you put it in water, you know, supposedly it's good for you. Um, but yeah, we in my town, um, the World Public Union, we had meetings about how to do this and how we could um, change our community because that's where I think it starts is in your community. If you want to change, you have to change your own world around you. And it's that starts on a local level. It's not like you can change France or um, when you're living in Chicago or something. You know, you got to start on a local level, grassroots, and you got to meet people. You got to meet up with the other activists in your town. And when there's a protest and it's time to protest, the World Public Union is a way to that all unions protest at the same time. So if we have a big union in in Chicago, we have a big one in Toronto, we have a big one in San Diego, let's just say, and something really drastic happens, it's a way for everybody to show their the voice. You know what I mean? It could be the voice of the world if it builds up to that potential. But that's kind of the one of the ways ways that I kind of thought of changing the world and and trying to change it, anyways. And and this way here, it's it's a way that it's publicly ran. You know what I mean? Um, it depends on the specific needs of the community. Um, some places have different issues than other cities, and um, and that's a local issue. So it's really important that people, um, you know, th- that people even consider doing something like this. Because um, I would suggest if you are interested and you want to make change for the world, um, get in touch with me at theworldpublicunion.org or join the forum and just um, comment on there. Join the community and start a start a group in your community where you can teach people about this kind of stuff. Show them videos you know, have monthly meetings and show documentaries or have monthly meetings and discuss what's going on in your town. Um, but it's important, too, to uh, to try to address the fluoride issue because um, we tried doing that here in Sudbury, and we had a petition made, and we passed it around, and we had a lot of support for it. And then the mayor told us that it's they have put fluoride in the water to harden the pipes and keep the pipes clean, and they <laughs> said that um, it's not financially possible to... to um, to remove the fluoride, but I, I, I believe that they're just dumping it into the water supply. Like they get um, big, big uh, barrels of fluoride in, and then they they mix it and they dilute it or whatever, and then it gets into the public su- uh, water supply through the pipe. So, you know, they had all these excuses on why they didn't want to remove fluoride, and that kind of made me think like, wow, there's there's bigger powers here than just a, a local. So if 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 we can't do it in my town in Sudbury, then if everybody if every town and every city was protesting at the same time and signing petitions and trying to get fluoride out of the water, then it would become a world issue. And, and I think they'd look at it way more seriously than they are now. When, when, it, when it's like a, a 90 or 80% of the world or, or the people that are protesting and, and saying no means no, um, they, they usually tend to listen a bit more than when nobody's actually doing anything or involved in their community or protesting. So that's, that's why I started the World Public Union is kind of a way for people to get active. Because that's what it's going to take. We can't just sit on our computers and watch YouTube videos and then say, yeah, I'm awake, I'm awake. Because that's not what it's going to take. It's going to take 
um, meeting and physically doing something with your body, mind, and soul. You know, you can't just sit on the computer and, and um, have a an identity, a false identity, a nickname or whatever, and then chat and post on, and say you're awake. Like, you need to, to get involved locally, know who your local politicians are, know them by name, get in touch with them. Um, when you see something happening on a local level, um, that's what's needed to change the world, you know. And, and unfortunately, nobody's being taught that in schools, even from a young age. They don't teach you about law or politics or taxes or money or anything like that. They teach you about, you know, most kids now are watching movies in their classrooms and they're not really learning too much, so. Yeah, well, we, we, we need more people like you. And his website, again, is worldpublicunion.org. Uh, Mark, we definitely need to get you on the show sometime. Again, uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, no problem. Thanks for uh, wanting to talk to me. Um, I, I, I'm definitely up for talking with anybody about this because I think these are important issues that, that we need to discuss more openly as, as as a people, you know? Yeah, well, thanks for coming on the show again, and uh, we'll try to keep in touch, all right? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. All right. Yep. All right, and that was, again, Mark Howitt of the World Public Union. Uh Disturb, disturbing to say the least. Um, and our guest before it was Darren Crapo, uh, and his show was uh, UFO Planet. I want to thank both of our guests for coming on tonight. Um, very interesting topics, and I encourage you uh, again to come and back and listen to us next week and check out our website, which is in the dark Friday night dot com, and follow us on Twitter at in the dark 2126 I'm David Kirk this is in the dark and I'll see you next Friday